Hello and welcome back to the final episode of the six week home barista boot camp. If you've made it this far then hopefully you've already seen some uh, dramatic improvements to your coffee at home and if you haven't seen all of the other episodes yet make sure you watch the other ones first before watching this summary. In this last episode I'm going to summarize all of the other episodes, uh, clarify a few things that a few of you had trouble with and answer any questions, any feedback that you had along the way. In the description below, I'm also going to put some uh, timestamps with uh, each of the episode summaries and each of the questions asked. So if you have some uh, particular areas that you were needing the feedback, you can search straight for those. If by the end of this your question still hasn't been answered, you can definitely feel free to put a comment down below and I'll keep answering these questions even after this series is finished. So episode one was an introduction to the boot camp. We also talked about a couple of things like freshly roasted coffee, uh, making sure that coffee degasses for about a week before you start using it. We also discussed having a few little things to help. Uh, so having some scales, timers, things like that, that will help you brew more consistently at home. And feedback wise for this one, it was mostly you guys saying how you're excited for the boot camp, uh, excited to see the lessons that were coming ahead. Also a bunch of you uh, placed subscription orders or just one-off orders with that discount code. So thank you for those of you who did that. In episode two, we talked about extracting better espresso and we talked about that dose, yield and flow rate. So we talked about that ratio of one to two. So if your dose is say, for example, 20 grams, then your yield needs to be 40 grams. And also we we're talking about that flow rate of 26 to 32 seconds. And if your flow rate was outside of those numbers, you needed to adjust the grind to get it into those numbers. So for example, if your extraction was 25 seconds or faster, you need to go a little bit finer. And if your extraction was 33 seconds or slower, you need to go a little bit coarser. Something to clarify on this one, I kind of glossed over the fact that sometimes you do need to waste a little bit of coffee. So when you adjust your grinder, make sure you get rid of any coffee that's in the hopper and also clear out a little bit of extra coffee that was in the chute or in the burrs. That way you'll see the result of your grind adjustment. Sometimes what will happen is someone will make their adjustment to the grinder, they'll pull another shot and they'll see the same result flow rate wise. Uh, in that situation, it's just because you're using coffee of the same grind, it hasn't yet adjusted to the new grind size. A couple of you guys asked about tamp pressure. So how hard you're pushing down with your tamper. The way I think about that is I stop pushing the moment it feels like the coffee isn't collapsing any further. So while you're pushing down, you'll feel that coffee collapsing. And the moment it feels like you're more just pushing against the uh, bench or the table, and it doesn't feel like that coffee is collapsing any further, that's all the pressure you need to put on your coffee. A couple of people asked about mils versus grams. So if you didn't have a scale and you wanted to measure your extraction in mils, you can interchange mils and grams fairly easily. Grams is just a lot easier to be accurate. Uh, with the mils, sometimes if your coffee is fresh or your coffee is roasted differently, the amount of crema you get uh, makes it hard to tell just how many uh, mils of espresso you have. And that's why we switched to using grams. You also asked about single shot baskets or you clarified if the uh, extraction I was talking about was for a double shot. Now I was definitely talking about a double shot extraction and that's pretty standard for how we extract coffee in cafes. Now I do understand that some of you will like to use your single shot basket. You just need to know that if you're going to use your single shot basket, you'll have to adjust the grind to suit that basket. You can't just interchange the single and the double shot basket willy nilly. And in terms of your ratio for a single shot basket, it's exactly the same. So if for example, you have 10 grams in, you'll have 20 grams out for that single shot espresso. The flow rate stays pretty similar as well. I'd aim to get about 26 to 30 seconds. I don't have heaps of experience extracting single shots, but actually the flow rate is uh, quite similar to our double shot extractions. We also had a couple of people asking about pre-infusion and whether that counted towards our 26 to 30 second flow rate. If you don't know what pre-infusion is, uh, basically it's just like a low pressure flow rate. So the water is flowing into the puck, but not at full nine bar pressure. I tend to have pre-infusion as a fairly low number, uh, just enough time to saturate the puck. So you might have four to six seconds where that water is slowly flowing through that puck, and then we're gonna ramp up to nine bar. Now in terms of flow rate or time with pre-infusion, I tend to keep things fairly similar. So I wouldn't add an extra six seconds uh, to my total flow rate if I had pre-infusion at six seconds. And the last question you guys had for this episode was about uh, grinders that have timers. So any of those automatic grinders where you press a button and it grinds a certain amount of time. Now what you need to understand for these grinders is that time is just how long those burrs are spinning for. So what you need to do is you need to adjust the grind and dial in first. Make sure that whatever you are dosing is dialed in and extracting really well. And then after that, you're going to adjust the timer on your grinder so that it gives you the dose you're after. 
The reason you need to do that is if these birds are close together, then less coffee is going to grind in the same amount of time. And if the birds are further apart, then more coffee will grind in the same amount of time. So if for example, you kept the timer for that dose the same and then made your grind finer, your dose would now be lower. So if you had 20 grams before and you made it a little bit finer, you might find now that you're only dosing 19 grams. So that's why if you manually dose with one of those grinders and make sure that you have the grind dialed in, then you can go back afterwards and adjust that timer so it's delivering the correct dose. Okay, moving on to episode three, which I called What the Froth, I uh, was all about texturing your milk. And in this one, I talked about how important it was to have a really good quality milk, and that's especially important if you're using any of those alternate milks. If you use any of the cheaper alternate milks, they're probably not designed to work well with espresso, and then they will react when you pour that milk into your espresso shot. I also talked about getting the angle of that steam wand uh, correct in the jug to get that whirlpool going, and then adding the correct amount of air for the coffee that you're trying to make. One of the main questions I saw from this one is uh, talking about having that really dry foam on top of your milk when you finish texturing. A couple of things could have been happening in this situation. Uh, perhaps that whirlpool wasn't going smoothly enough to take the air that you're adding and mix it into the milk. You have to get that whirlpool going straight from the start. So it's the first thing you're looking for. And then after you get that whirlpool going, then you're adding the air to your milk. And you wanna add the air while your milk is as cool as possible. So you have more time for that whirlpool to mix it in. The frothy milk can also separate out if you heat your milk a little bit too hot and burn the milk. So try and aim for that 60 to 65 degrees when you're steaming your milk. In episode four, we talked about pouring the main coffee. So those flat whites, lattes, cappuccinos. All of these coffees are a single shot of espresso in a normal sized cup uh, with varying amounts of froth on the top of that coffee. Remember for a cappuccino we want quite a bit more froth in the cup and when you're pouring that froth into the cup you want to make sure the jug is nice and close to that cup so that froth can fall in. And remember when we're pouring our flat whites and lattes we want our milk to have a little bit less air in it and we're pouring from a little bit higher so that we set that crema and make sure we have that nice brown surface on the top of the coffee. So for the feedback in this one, a couple of you had some uh, clarification about the shots or you were saying that uh, where you're from, it's a double shot for a flat white or things like that. That is 100% true. There are a lot of uh, different ideas about what makes a flat white, what makes a latte, what makes a cappuccino. And in some countries, the amount of shots you use is different. For me, I think the best thing to do regarding strength is to understand what tastes good for you. So get the cup that you normally use, try it with a single shot. If that tastes like the nice strength, then use a single shot. If you're finding that when you use a single shot, it's a little bit milky for you, then pull a double shot into that cup and you'll get something a little bit stronger. At the end of the day at home, you're making coffee usually for yourself, uh, maybe for your friends or family. So if you find out what works for you at home, then it's gonna be perfect for you. In this one, I also teased the uh, Latte Art Bootcamp and you guys seemed super excited about that. I've already started uh, mapping out how that boot camp is gonna go. I've also started practicing my latte art again to make sure my skills are up to standard for the uh, boot camp. And I've also got a surprise in store for the boot camp that's gonna be super exciting. Uh, so if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you click subscribe because that latte art boot camp is just around the corner. And lastly, we had episode five, which was the cleaning episode. So we talked about how often you should do all of the cleaning to keep your equipment clean. And that was whether we were talking about shot to shot with your uh, porter filter, cleaning out the group head at the end of each session, or doing a back flush at the end of the week. I also talked about water filtration, which is especially important for those of you who are living in areas that have very hard water. I got a few questions in this one, mainly about uh, some murky water coming out of the uh, hot water tap on your machine. In this situation, I'd usually suggest it's something to do with the uh, water quality going into the machine. I would definitely do a descale in this situation, but I noted that they were saying that their uh, machine supplier was saying not to do descaling at home and to uh, take it to the tech to get it descaled professionally. If this is what the machine manufacturer recommends, then I would go with that. Uh, with my rocket, I have taken it in to be serviced a number of times over the course of its life. Uh, I've had it for about nine years and it's probably been serviced maybe six or so times. It's always come back uh, performing really well after a service. Another question I got was with regards to cleaning out your grinder. Now cleaning out the burrs or the burr chamber in your grinder is definitely important and worthwhile doing. I decided not to include it in this boot camp because it's actually a fairly involved process and you actually have to be quite careful when you're uh, taking out the burrs. The main thing that can go wrong is when you're putting it all back together. If you misalign the thread when you're uh, tightening the collar of your grinder, you can actually do permanent damage to your grinder. I have done a video on this maintenance uh, previously, so I'll link that in the description below. 
I wouldn't say that you shouldn't do it. I would just say if you're going to clean out the burr chamber of your grinder, do so very carefully. So this brings us to the end of the six week home barista bootcamp and I hope that you have learned so much about making better coffee at home. Making good coffee on the espresso machine is actually quite simple. There's nothing super tricky about it. It's just about knowing a few key aspects that will really improve the quality of your cup. I know that I mentioned in my videos a lot that if you want to support me, you can buy my coffee. And thank you so much to everyone in Australia that does buy my coffee. I really do appreciate it. But if you've made it all the way to the end of the six week bootcamp, then no doubt you've really enjoyed it. You've really been getting a lot out of it. All that I ask is that you share it with another person who really enjoys coffee. I've been building this Coffee Fusion community for a number of years. I've been doing Coffee Fusion since 2011. I do love doing it, but I really want to double my subscriber count by the end of this year. It would be such a massive goal to hit 100,000 subscribers, uh, and it would mean that I could devote a lot more time to creating this kind of content. So if you've been watching along but you're not subscribed, uh, click that subscribe button, that really helps. Let's see if we can work towards this goal of 100,000 subscribers together. I've got a lot of ideas for content lined up for the rest of the year. My plan is to release at least one video a week for the rest of the year. So yeah, click that subscribe button and you'll be along for the journey. In a few weeks time, I'll be starting the six week latte art bootcamp and I look forward to seeing you there. Keep frothing.